Greeting and once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press and I'm George Boston Ryans. And I'm in Brooks County, of course, and this is the 17th day of the Quitman 10 plus 2 alleged voter fraud and the Lula Smart case. September the 15th. And do you not know after 17 days, no news media in the United States of America seems interested in this very high profile case dealing with voting rights in the state of Georgia. And we know that on Wednesday of last week, the Honorable Al Sharpton of MSNBC gave good news coverage about Georgia Secretary of State Brian P. Kemp in terms of making statements about the minority or black African American vote versus the Republican Party. Now most of us of average intelligence believe that the Secretary of State like many other elected officials and people dealing with something as important as voting rights would be non-partisan. Would not go along the lines of standing for either the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the Independent Party, the Green Party, or your party. We thought that they would be fair and just. So from listening to Al Sharpton, and others, we now may be able to understand a little clearer what happened to the equipment 10 plus 2 on December 21st, 2010. When they were brought up on alleged voter fraud charges based on a postal clerk seeing Lula Smart drop bundles of absentee ballots into the post office after purchasing stamps, as well as in the back post office boxes, which you will see somewhere on this playlist. That's number one. Now, Lula Smart took the stand sat, uh, Friday. She said she never dropped these ballots into the mailbox. And so now somebody is lying, and you don't know nothing about it because you don't have a news media after 17 days to say anything about what took place in the courtroom. That's part one. Part two is that the registrar of the Brooks County Board of Elections took ballots home to process them, setting a dangerous precedent that anybody in the state of Georgia, any registrar, can take ballots home to process them, and nothing will be done to them. That, that is the dangerous precedent that has been set by the registrar. Now, the postal clerk that mishandled the mail just received a letter reprimand in April of this year, 2014. So why didn't somebody correct him back in 2011. And why or what has been done to the registrar if it was inappropriate for her to do that? Or is this a new precedent in the state of Georgia that you can take ballots not only to your home, but maybe where you're going on vacation to South Florida or maybe to Hawaii and then bring them back? Because this is what we can glean from this if nothing is done about it. Number three, I was in Atlanta when the equipment 10 was being arrested. And the call, phone call that I received, they said, Rhymes, all hell done broke loose down here in equipment, and they arresting everybody. I cut my vacation short, got back in equipment in Brooks County, along with the late Calvin Benjamin, an employee for 33 years at Moody Air Force Base, he was, 
We walk the streets of Quitman, and we walk the streets of Morven, and we talk to black voters who said they were intimidated by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to the degree that they may never, ever vote again. Now, it would be one thing for me to make that statement if I didn't have facts to back it up. But in case one of Lula Smart that ended up a mistrial, people testified to the intimidation by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation in black people casting their votes. This was brought out in the second trial that also ended up in a mistrial for Lula Smart. The state of Georgia tried her a second time. It ended up in a mistrial. The third trial, which is, I'm going in a few minutes, we have yet to have an outcome of, that, of this trial. But there is something seriously wrong. I've been saying it for 20 some odd years. There's something wrong here in the state of Georgia. And it seems as if though, no one knows just how deep the mole hole goes. But there's one thing that I believe and others who love and respect the God of the universe. We must understand that this cannot continue. Do you not know that the circumstances of the time called a Moses into existence? Do you not know that the circumstances of the time call an Ezekiel into existence? The circumstances of the time call Daniel into existence. The circumstances of the time called Malachi into existence. And do you not know that the circumstances of time also called Jesus the Messiah to do the work that he did? Same way with Noble Drew Ali, Paul Robeson, Frederick Douglass, John Brown at Harper's Ferry, and others. And so today is no different. And so as we watch the continuation of what many of us call a sham, orchestrated by those who do not want to give up their seats of power, as I said earlier, the court case is about to begin, and I got to go. And I'm going because the other news media outlets, they didn't come. And because they didn't come, I got to go. Because this is what I do. And as a retired military veteran, I believe that you have a right to know to get on free press. Bye-bye. We gone.